Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. We're going to do something a little bit different than what we normally do. And I hope this turns out okay. I am recording over here our screen. You can see my hand. Hello everybody. And I'm recording audio off of my lab. And I'm also recording this on OBS. And then we're going to go ahead and do a demonstration as I promised many times already. And I never got a chance to do it. How to prepare an image for a monochrome print and also then we'll walk over as the print is being sent and produced over to the Pro 100 and we will see it produced. Now I'm going to walk you through in Lightroom what I normally do. This is not going to be too long winded I hope and so you will see just about the way I go about to produce an image in monochrome. Now let me switch over. Again, I'm not going to do any cuts or any kind of uh, editing here. We're going to look at our primary screen. And as you can see right now, I am on Q Image Ultimate. I have printed this nice standard image right here. And I'm going to show you that at the end of this. But we're going to go ahead and get into Lightroom at this moment. So let me go ahead and load up Lightroom. And there you go. This is my friend. I knew her as a little girl of about maybe five years old if that old uh, she's the daughter of one of our scientists at work and i promised her when she was little that i was going to shoot all her pictures when she got married and of course she looked at me and she went ew yeah so anyway i did keep that promise so this is just one simple shot we went downtown to the washington monument over there by the lincoln memorial and i told him to act silly and i went ahead and took this series of pictures as you can see there's somebody there and there's somebody here and there's somebody here i did not remove these people here but i did remove these two and i think it turned out quite well so what we're going to do now we're going to export this over to q image now i still have to straighten the horizon a little bit uh, we can do this now if we wish we can go ahead and hit r and we can go Go ahead and click and align that horizon line, meaning right here, right from this edge right here across. So now that's pretty well straight. So is the monument. We don't want a monument to be tilting. And I removed that shadow. If you recall that shadow, that was very distracting right here. This is actually me. All right. So now that we have this nicely aligned, we're going to go ahead and perform a little bit of editing. Now I have the clipping warnings on and that will give me a good idea of whether i am getting too close to the black point and i'm going over the white point in other words i'm clipping so let's just go ahead and for fun we're going to go ahead and click on auto and you can see i immediately am clipping some of the uh, black but we're going to be doing this in monochrome anyway so what i'll do is i'll quickly fix that by moving the black slider over slightly I think I like this contrast quite a bit. We're going to do most of the total changes in black and white mode. So we're going to go ahead and click here and that will give us a black and white mode. I want to concentrate, of course, on the bride. And as you can see, I still have a little bit of black that is being clipped. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that if I can. If I cannot, then I'll just leave it. Remember, this is just a JPEG image. so. I did not have a raw file handy for this. And let's see what else we can do. We can bring down the highlights a little bit. Contrast can be increased. Bring the highlights down a little bit. I should have made that clear. And one thing that you can do while you are in this mode is to just simply go over to the histogram, grab the central tonal range, and just move it up a little bit. These little areas are going to print pure black and that's fine because there's really no detail whatsoever. Now, one of the things that you could do, I mean, I like the way this came out already as it is, but we're going to go ahead and enhance that a little bit more, maybe a little bit more contrast overall. Now, if this was a raw file, I could click on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction, which actually will fix any kind of problems that the lens may have impart it so we're not going to do that because this is of course not a raw file we need to sharpen this and the way to do that without sharpening any kind of like 
little blemishes on the skin or whatever you might have. We don't want to sharpen those. We don't want to accentuate those. We only want to accentuate edges. So what we're going to do is a little trick that you can do. And that is to click on this sharpening amount, bring it over to just a couple of points. Click your Alt key on Windows and slide that masking all the way over to the right. And as you can see, it is just ignoring all of this middle tonalities. We don't want to sharpen those. It's only going to affect the edges. So at this point, I can actually bring my sharpening amount all the way to max, and there are no artifacts. It's actually only affecting the edges. I can adjust this whichever way I wish. If I bring it all the way down, it's going to try to sharpen grain and, and noise and anything like that. So we don't want that to happen. We're going to keep it almost all the way to the right. And let's see, do we have any noise? I don't think so, but we'll add, we'll add a little bit of noise reduction as well. Now, what we need to do is actually add some vignetting. We're going to close that. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of vignetting. Look at that dramatically affects the image. Not too much. That looks like one of those old fashioned 1920s results. All right, so when we do that, we may be affecting his face a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the top. I'm going to click on this little brush tool. And that's way too big, so I'll use my scroll wheel until I bring it down to about the size of his face. And I'm going to just go ahead and paint on it. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the exposure just a tiny bit. That's way too much. And of course, right about there. It gives him that luminance that he requires so that he can compete with this gorgeous lady right here. All right, so that is it. That's all we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and send that over to Q Image, File, Plugin Extras, Q Image Ultimate. And it will immediately be sent. And I'm just going to go ahead and get into Q Image settings. We're going to use the Pro 100. We're going to use Photo Paper Pro Luster, we're going to use 13 by 19, which is A3+. And we're going to use the OEM profile. This is the actual profile for that paper. Remember, we're using Precision Colors inks, and yet we're going to go ahead and use OEM profile. Well, you'll see the results. Now, in order to print on QImage nowadays, it's extremely simple. You just click on that, and say, for instance, I had some other, say, other profile chosen one for the pro 10 and we'll go ahead and load that so let's go ahead and click on that little tool icon then click on the magnifying glass it knows that we have pro luster chosen it will immediately load pro luster at the top we want the one slash two that's the higher quality profile another thing that you could do is set it for auto perceptual or relative colorimetric. There's no need to do that because we are printing in monochrome. So we'll go ahead and keep it. I always keep it on relative colorimetric and automatically see a lot of people have been asking about the XPS driver or the piggyback driver, which by the way, is not a driver. It just augments the regular basic driver and sort of fakes 16-bit printing. Well, it's also responsible for many artifacts that people are reporting. So I don't use it whatsoever. I am using only QImage Ultima at this point, and it does produce the same effect. Remember, Windows cannot print 16-bit, regardless of what anyone tells you. So what it will do, it will dither so that it actually generates a facsimile look, if you will, of what 16-bit image printing would look like. Basically, it's going to create a tonal value between two adjacent tonal values. And normally, you cannot do that. All right, we'll hit OK. And now we're ready to load our image. So we'll go ahead and load our image. Boom. And I want to go ahead and give it a more of a, uh, of a wider border. So we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to go to Custom. And I'm going to set a minimal short side border of 11 and a half. And that will give me a nice border. And I can go ahead and trim the top and bottom 
See, I am not ever going to be stuck with a particular size. I'm one of those that will custom everything. So at this point, we are ready to print this baby. Let me go back and refresh what I just did. We're going to let QImage use the original OEM profile. And by the way, if I had told QImage to let the printer control color, it would have set that color matching setting automatically for you. That's one of the new features that it offers. So basically, it is almost dummy proof printing. It will actually set your driver so that you never, ever double profile again. I will demonstrate that on some other video because I don't want to make this too long winded. So we're going to go ahead and quickly hit print. I will take the camera over. Hopefully I will not screw up and I will take my voice recorder along with me as well. So let's go ahead and hit print and OK. And I got the voice recorder here. We're going to walk the camera over. As you can see, I'm still here. I don't want to make you believe that I'm trying to fool you. There it goes. It's going to start printing. We'll set this right here. We'll be able to see the print emerging. Let me lower the camera. And there is my Pro 100. And as you can hear, probably, it just began to print. So we will see what this looks like. Again, we're printing with the original OEM profile, yet we're using Precision Colors inks. And the goal here is to get a nice tonal range and get a fairly, fairly neutral print. You can also choose to print with black and white mode in a Canon printer. And that gives you the luxury then to adjust your tonality here and there so that you either add a tone to it. Maybe you want a brownish tone. It'll be a nice global linear tone. Or you can add a bluish tone or you can leave it as neutral as you can possibly ever print. And so that way, this will allow you to then proceed to um, create black and whites or monochrome as, as we like to call them in any kind of tonal range that you want. And it depends on the paper. If you have a nice warm paper, you may want to print your image slightly warmer than normal. If you have a cold paper, then you might want to print it as a little bit bluish. And if you have just a very neutral type paper base, then you just leave it at the most neutral setting. But again, when you're printing uh, in so-called black and white mode, that's one of the luxuries that you have where you can actually adjust the tonality. Let me switch over my voice recorder. It was getting in the way there. As you can see, the print is coming out. I have multiple light sources here, so it's rather difficult to see any kind of uh, color balance. I hope this comes across on video as I am seeing it with my eyes, which is really gorgeous. We'll go ahead and put this over on my little stand and we'll attempt to photograph it with the camera. But as, a, as I am seeing now, hello there, I'm right here. This is coming out gorgeous. This paper actually has a slightly warm look to it, which I really like, even though I don't like luster papers. This is absolutely gorgeous. Full tonal range. There's no blocking of the highlights of the guy's shirt or my girl here Christine yeah this is really really good once it comes out I'm gonna I'm gonna walk the camera over I'm gonna adjust it again no cuts what you see is what you get so again folks it's relatively easy to do this there is no real rocket science to this printing of monochromes again your your monitor has to be calibrated correctly in fact it really even if it's not once you convert to black and white in any of these applications you're basically set even though it may not look perfectly neutral on your monitor that is great wow the detail is amazing all right let's move over to the stand hope i don't knock anything over here we go
this is one of those really awkward videos that we really are not used to using uh, doing here so there we go all right so let me move my wire out of the way as i look at this and i'm lighting it with my regular lights that i shoot with when i'm doing the talking head type videos there is i mean i can almost see tonalities here in the hair the hair is jet black right in these areas remember the areas that went uh basically clipped those are black every fold every little detail on that dress is present you know she had flawless skin anyway and wow i'm just really impressed and again this is third party inks folks we are printing here at about an eighth of the cost of oem i'm glad that i lightened his face a little bit definitely did um, help out and the corners are just slightly darkened that vignetting just the right amount of vignetting and that's what it takes that's what it takes to get something to look this good all right so let me show you the standard image and this is available on my facebook group as well this is what i used to basically originally test the printer's output because i hadn't printed on the pro 100 and guess what it did it threw a b200 error on me that i was able to fix by turning off the printer pulling the plug and plugging it back on and turning it back on i had to replace one of the cartridges by refilling it and of course resetting it and that was it lucky me i didn't have to crack open one of my other two spare pro 100s that i have laying around here on the floor back there somewhere there they are but anyway that is it let me sit down here and i'll try to line myself up here a little bit close that get out of the way i hope i'm not clipping my head off let me see here we go that might be too much but anyway so i hope you enjoyed this this was unedited this is straight through the process again all it takes is to follow certain steps just go ahead and use if you use lightroom you can convert immediately to black and white and I didn't even bother adjusting tones, okay? You can actually selectively adjust your tones, basically your colors. What would be color in the unconverted image can be adjusted linearly up and down. And you can do magic when you're working in black and white mode in Lightroom. Something that is red and green and happens to have the same density, you can actually change that so that you have a difference in density when you turn it into a grayscale or monochrome image so again this is a lot of the things that you could do is just just it, it has no ending you can do so many things and that's why i i just love working in lightroom and able to produce things on prints like this is just one of the rewards that you get again wow um she's a mother of two right now so um i haven't seen her since the wedding and unfortunately uh, they don't live here any longer but anyway i hope you enjoyed this again you saw how simple that was if you need any more tutorials on the actual process the steps the settings just let me know but you see how simple it, it was i really didn't do anything special okay to arrive at this all right thank you so much don't forget to subscribe share and like and until the next time obviously happy printing everybody bye bye